Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. All right, so let's talk about the balancing of chemical equations. And we're dealing with chemical equations and balancing them, we have to make sure we adhere to a simple rule. And that's a conservation of matter. You might know it as a conservation of mass. And that is saying that matter is not created or destroyed, it's only changed, okay? So we wanna make sure that we don't like magically make up new elements as we're, going, as we're dealing with chemical equations. We wanna make sure whatever we have on the reactant side is exactly the number of particles we have on the product side. And so let's talk about what I'm, let's put into action what I'm talking about. Let's deal with this. We have this written chemical equation, um, and I'm going to put that into a skeletal equation or um, the actual chemicals. So we have liquid carbon disulfide. Okay, so that's CS2. We're going to it's liquid, so we have to denote that. Uh, reacts with oxygen gas, and oxygen gas is one of our diatomics, so we're going to say it's O2, and it's a gas. Yields or produces carbon dioxide gas and sulfur dioxide gas. Okay, great. But we want to make sure when we're dealing with chemical equations that the number of particles or the number of elements that you have on the reactant side equals the number of elements you have on the product side. So let's go ahead and check that. We have carbon, sulfur, and oxygen here, which means we should have strictly carbon, sulfur, and oxygen on the product side. Okay. And we want to make sure when we're dealing with these that we do not change the actual molecules themselves. We only change the number of molecules that we have. So the only place I actually want to put numbers and make changes is the place before that. We call those coefficients. Okay, so on the product, or sorry, on the reactant side, we have one carbon, we have two sulfur atoms, and we have two oxygen atoms. On the product side, we have one carbon, uh, one sulfur, and two plus two is four oxygens. Okay, great. So now, right now, before we even balanced it, we notice that we have an uneven uh, number of elements on either side, so make sure they're even and balanced. So right now the carbons are balanced. We have one carbon on the reactant side, one on the product side, so we're good there. Looking at sulfur, we have two sulfur atoms, and we have one sulfur atom over here, so we have to change that. The place we change it is before the, el before the element, or sorry, before the compound, right here. So I have two on that side, I wanna make two on this side, so I'm gonna put a two here. Okay, that tells me I produced two sulfur dioxide particles. So two sulfurs, but then I also changed the oxygen. So we have four now, plus that other two, which is six. Okay, so now our carbons are balanced, check. Our sulfurs are balanced, check. We wanna make sure our oxygens then are balanced. We have two on the reactant side and six on the product side. I'm gonna change that. So over here, we wanna say there's three, we, we need three oxygen gas particles to react with one carbon, carbon disulfide particle. So we're gonna change that to six, and now it's one, two, six, one, two, six. We are good to go, this is completely balanced. Great reaction. Okay, let's do something a little bit more complicated. Going over here, before we dive into this equation, this reaction we have on the board, which is potassium chromate uh, plus lead to nitrate yields potassium nitrate plus lead to chromate. Um, we want to make sure we balance this properly, but it's, there's a lot of molecules, or sorry, a lot of atoms in this. So we want to make sure this is easy on ourselves. Before we jump right into it, we should notice a pattern. Um, we have a chromate molecule or, or polyatomic ion here. We also have a chromate polyatomic ion here. I can just keep those together. I also have a nitrate particle polyatomic ion here and a nitrate here. I don't have to separate the nitrogen and the oxygen out. I can keep them together since they're on the reactants and product side both. So I'm gonna separate everything else out. Potassium, chromate, lead, and nitrate. Oops. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the product side. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so I have two potassiums, uh, one chromate, one lead, and two nitrates. I have one potassium, one chromate, one lead, and one nitrate. Okay, so let's deal with the first one first. Potassium, we have two over here. We have one over here. I do not want to put a two within the part, within the um, compound itself. I do not want to change this at all. I want to put it in front. So I'm gonna make that two. So I'm gonna have, now I have two potassiums over here, but that also changes my nitrates to two. And um, let's see, so we have Two, one, one, two, two, one, one, two. Looks like the whole thing's done. We are good to go. Let's look at something a little bit more complicated. Let's look at um, this, this uh, reaction here. So we have C3H6 reacts with oxygen gas to produce CO2 plus H2O. 
All right, let's see what we've been doing. Writing our elements out. C, H, and O. C, H, and O. Okay, we have three carbons. We have six hydrogens and two oxygens. We have one carbon, we have two oxygens, and we have three, I'm oh, sorry, two hydrogens, three oxygens. Okay, so first things first, we want to balance our carbons. So you have three on the reactant side, one on the product side. I want to put a three in front. So that changes this to three. That changes this to six plus one is seven. Okay, hydrogens, I have six on the reactant side, two on the product side. So I want to put a three here, making this six, but it also changes our oxygen. So we now have three plus uh, six, which is nine. Okay, so let me go to our oxygens. Our oxygens, we have two on the reactant side and nine on the product side. How are we going to make this um, change to nine? Well, all right, so we'll put a 4.5 there. 4.5 times two is nine, right? But that looks terrible. We don't ever want to put a decimal or a fraction as a coefficient. So how are we going to get rid of that? Um, well, a good solution is to multiply the whole reaction by two. So, okay, that means I'm going to change all my coefficients to multiply them by two. So I then am going to, where should I put this? I'll just put it here. I then am going to make this two, because one times two is two. 4.5 times two is nine. Three times two is six, so we're going to change that to a six. And three times uh, two is six. So then let's check it. We have six carbons, six carbons. Check. We have 12 hydrogens, 12 hydrogens. Awesome. We now have 18 oxygens. We now have 12 plus six. Great, 18 oxygens, we are done. And that is how you balance chemical reactions. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it, work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, to fix. Yeah. <laughs>